say the story started a little earlier than that. Yes, Jessica. When I was in first grade, I met Jenny. When I was in first grade, I met Jenny. So the paragraph above that, I think you could say that is part of the story too. Okay. Now, where do you guys think the story ends? Where does she stop telling a story and start telling us what she learned? Is that here? Where? Okay, where is that? Okay, can you find the exact sentence? Okay, so after Jenny went home, he's in the second to last paragraph, right there after Jenny went home. Okay, so do we think that that's the end of the story, Desiree? What do you think? You don't know? Okay. Did anyone put anything different for where the story ended? Tyler, what did you put? I think it ended the second to last paragraph. Okay, right at the beginning of that paragraph? No, at the end of that. Okay, tell me the exact sentence where you think it ends. This is more than anything else is the reason that we never used this word in our house. Okay, so you said at the end of that paragraph. All right, did anyone put anything else? Mark this. Um, I did, I mean, like, I saw, like, um, sensory details. You saw some sensory details? Okay, we're going to get back to that in just a oh. second. Okay, I'll make sure I call on you for that. Okay, did anyone put anything else for where she stops talking about the story and where she starts talking about what she learned from it? Sebastian? After her mom explains it. After her mom explains it? Okay. So pretty much right where Tyler said, at the end of that second to last paragraph. Okay. What about the sentence in the middle of that paragraph where she says, I didn't learn until many years later? Did anyone highlight that as a time transition word? I didn't learn until many years later? That's a time transition, right? Now we're, we're learning that something happened later, right? After the story later, she learned something. So it's in the same general area as what both of y'all said, but I think that the story has to end right there where she says, I didn't learn until many years later. Why, why am I saying that the story has to end there? Okay, so Sebastian's saying that's when she's coming back to the present. Okay, so she was telling her story, which is all in the past, right? But now she's coming back to the present and saying, this is what I learned from it. This is what I learned later. Does that make sense to you all? All right, what were some of the other time transition words that you found? Um, John Hanson. Um, down like the sixth paragraph, I think. When is it? Uh, two years. Um, the sixth paragraph? I think. I think. Is two years? I guess I haven't been in public schools for two years. Okay, have you been in public school for two years already? All right, so what does that tell us? Wait, you live in town. No, it's not. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So what does that tell us about our author? Um, we've been in school for two years. Been in school for two years, so what grade would she be in? First or second, maybe? Second grade? Yeah. Okay, so we know about how old she is. Hey, Justin, what were you going to add? Okay, well right now we're looking for time transition words, right? So a punch in my gut, what would that be? That's some figurative sensory language, right? That hearing that word felt like a punch in your gut. Right, so that's good for figurative language. But um, Marcus, what were you going to say for time? Um, I didn't learn until many years later that my mom, that my mom. Okay, so at the end there, what we were just talking about, I didn't learn until many years later. Okay, Megan? When I was in first grade, I met Jenny. Okay, so that tells us when she met her friend Jenny. Yeah, Andrew? 20 years later. 20 years later, another excellent one. Okay, um, Cindy? Um, the first time Jenny came to her house. Okay, the first time Jenny came to her house. First time, yeah. Um, Tyler? Is that mature? Sorry? Is that mature? 
As I matured. Okay, what does as I matured mean? What does it mean? Uh, as you get older. As you get older, anything else? Get wiser. Get wiser, maybe learn more things. Yeah, I think that mature has those connotations. All right, I think that's really good for time rates. Mark, you want to add one? Wouldn't seven-year-old gut, wouldn't that be seven-year-old? Yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that also tells us how old she is, her seven-year-old gut. You're right. I was focusing on the punch. But you're right, that would be a time word too. Thank you for adding that. Okay. Alright, so let's move to figurative language then. Marcus, you had something you wanted to say, right? Um, yeah. Jenny was busted. Okay, where are we? Um, paragraph three. Okay. Oh, boisterous. Boister oh, that's a great word. Okay, she's boisterous. Does anyone know what that means? It's not quite angry. It's kind of a little bit different from angry. It says that she's boisterous and loud and domineering. Okay, so boisterous is like full of energy okay, and loud. And domineering means she takes charge. She really takes charge of things. So when they're playing together, she's, she's in charge. She's the boss, right? She decides what game they're going to play, what the rules are going to be. Okay, that's the kind of personality she has. That she's kind of a loud person, kind of in your face. Okay, so that's great descriptive language. Okay, what else do we have? Um, Shelby? Um, it says, tormented by cruel classmate to slumber where you read to crash the Okay, and that's near the bottom. Tormented by cruel classmates who slung the word retard harshly in her face. Who are we talking about here? The mob, right? And how the mom was bullied as a kid? Right. So they slung the word retard. Can you literally sling words at somebody? Like mud? No. What does she mean there? Okay, they said it without hearing. Yeah, they just kind of threw it at her. They just threw it out there, those words that were meant to hurt. That part, um, is his mom mental too? She has a physical disability, oh. cerebral palsy. She had a physical disability, and you know that because it says that she um, walks differently, right? She, yeah, yeah. she was born with mild cerebral palsy, had been tormented by cruel classmates. She moved slowly and had a speech impediment. Okay, so her speech was affected. All right, what else do we have? It talks about a punch in the gut, all right? Um, Dawson? There was not a typical parade of other people's children in our house. I love that one. That's at the beginning. The typical parade of other people's children. Can you picture that, children, like, parading through your house? Just other neighborhood kids coming over to the house and just walking on through, maybe stopping in your fridge and grabbing a snack. Does that happen in anybody's house? No? That sometimes happened in my house growing up. Other kids would just come on through, play. Yeah. Well, what does it mean that that's not happening at this family's house? What would that mean? All right, who, who's talking to anything? John, did you say something? Justin? Okay, what would that mean if there's not a parade of children coming through your house? Dawson? It's quiet and there isn't many children. It's quiet at their house. He says that. They're a quiet family. Or she, I'm sorry. Our author says that they're a quiet family. They kind of stick to themselves. Who does she mostly play with? Which others? Brothers. Oh, her brothers. Yeah, her siblings, right? She plays with her own siblings not other kids in the neighborhood. Okay. All right. Any other figurative language we want to add? Okay. I want to go back to slinging the word retarded. I want to go back to that phrase. What type of figurative language is that? Personification. And how do you know that? Yeah, it's like saying that the word can be slung, 
which it can't literally do. 